Now, the last heresy we're going to look at is Sabellianism. Sabellianism is a very common actual heresy that we see actually even today in certain circles of the church. Now, the problem with Sabellianism is it goes by a number of different names. It's sometimes called Sabellianism. It's sometimes called Praxianism. Some have called it the teachings of Noetis at times. I'm going to use another word alongside it, and I'm going to switch to using this word exclusively, and that word is modalism. Modalism I find to be more helpful, at least from a teaching standpoint, because modalism at least implies what the issue is. But the teachers of this were Sibelius and Praxis, and in a lot of books and in a lot of histories and in a lot of the contemporary sources of the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th centuries, they'll talk about the errors of Sibelius. And what they mean by that is the errors of modalism. And Sibelianism is a Trinitarian heresy. It's one of the earliest Trinitarian heresies we have, if not the earliest. And again, what are they trying to do? They're trying to explain away the mystery of the Trinity. And what Sibelius does is he essentially says that there is only one God, pure and undivided. And that therefore, when we look in the scriptures and we see different persons, as we come to say in later Trinitarian language, different persons interacting with each other, the Father, the Son, the Spirit, that these are just different manifestations of the one God. Now, what is very attractive about modalism for a lot of people is it just makes a lot of sense. Okay, we are followers of one God. We are monotheists, Christians are. But we have different persons talking to each other, the Father and the Son and the Spirit. And we baptize in this Trinitarian name of Father, Son, and Spirit as well. So there's some threeness there. There's something there's some division, but is, is it a division? And what Sabellianism or modalism achieves is a real kind of aha where it can kind of sort of squish everything down to a very simple formula, which is that there's one God who shows up in three forms. Any of you who have been to Sunday school were probably taught at one point in your childhood that God is like water, that he can show up like ice, that he can show up like steam, or he could show up like liquid water that you have one God or one substance, but he just shows up in different forms. You've probably also heard of the shamrock analogy. There's one flower with three petals on it. That's how God is one and three. Again, the issue here is that it seems to make a great deal of sense. The problem though, and this is where the church lands, is when you try to square that with the actual biblical story, it makes no sense at all. It actually starts to foul up and gum up the works of a lot of our key passages for understanding Christ in his work. Take, for example, the Garden of the Gethsemane scene. And this is actually something that Tertullian and others will really cite when they go after Sibelius in some of their writings. The Garden of the Gethsemane scene is this very passionate moment where Christ, before the cross, is praying to the Father, speaking to the Father, interacting with the Father, asking things of him. Well, if you're a modalist, that entire scene is a joke because it's God talking to himself. He's just sort of play-acting certain things for us. Or take the cross, where we see Christ speaking to the Father. Or take the baptism of Christ, where the Father speaks about the Son and the Spirit descends. If you're a modalist, all of these simple readings of Scripture just simply evaporate. It's God sort of doing magic tricks for us. And so rather than having a scene like Gethsemane or the cross, where we see into the intimate life of God himself, what we have is something like a parent pretending to be something in front of his kids, pretending to be two different persons, speaking in two different voices, sort of doing a puppet show for us. Sibelianism is a common heresy for those who are Roman Catholic or they follow Roman Catholic doctrine. Now, in the first three centuries of the early church, the church was not Trinitarian. And they were not considered heretics because it was a majority view of all Christians, beginning with the early church of the apostles. Now, there was a school that developed in Alexandria that was promoting the Trinity. I'm talking about Clement of, of, of Alexandria. I'm talking about Origen and so forth. But at the same time, there was a school that opened up in Rome by the, the Catholic popes. Uh, Seferinus and Calixtus, who backed up the teaching of oneness. So the school of Rome was oneness, and it taught that the Trinity was not correct. 
This is the truth of history, and these are facts that have been omitted by Trinitarians of our time. You can search out the, the writings of early history and you will not find the word modalism. The word modalism was coined in the 1800s or 1900s, I'm not quite sure, by a Trinitarian scholar. And the word modalism, the definition itself, is contrary to what the Bible teaches on the oneness of God. We do not advocate modalism because modalism, modalism the definition, is incorrect. We believe what the Bible teaches on the oneness of God, that God is one, that He moves by His Spirit, and that He creates through His spoken, creative Word. The statement that Sabellianism is a Trinitarian heresy is completely false. You see, history reveals that it was oneness doctrine that was the first was taught by the early Church. And the Trinity doctrine was introduced in the second century by the uh, Apostolic Fathers <clears throat> who followed Greek philosophy and the Logos of Philo of Alexandria. The Logos of Philo of Alexandria was not a biblical teaching, but it was philosophical and mystical. And it taught that the Logos was a second person or second power that came out of God to do the work for God and the creation for God. This is not what oneness believers believe. This is not Bible. The modalism is an incorrect term that was developed by this Trinitarian scholar to bring discredit to the biblical definition of one God. You can search from Genesis to Revelation and you will not find a conversation between, between the th three persons of the Trinity. You will never find the Father speaking to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit speaking to the Father, and the Holy Spirit speaking to the Son. This just doesn't, does not happen. It's incorrect. Now, you will see where the Son is praying to the Father, and that is seen like in the Garden of Gethsemane, the cross, and even at ba the baptism of Jesus. But this is simply and the earthly son or the human son, the man Christ Jesus, who was a hundred percent man and who had to pray, who had to speak to God because he was human. Like all of us, he had to pray. Now, is it easier to believe that the man Christ Jesus was praying to the Father? Or is it does it does that make sense? Or does it make sense to say that God the Son was praying to God the Father? In other words, one God was praying to another God. Which of this makes sense? I believe it is the, the man Christ Jesus praying, uh, the man or humanity praying to divinity. Dr. Reeves mentions baptism, or as they call it, Trinitarian baptism. But he fails to explain that the doctrine of baptism in the Trinity is totally dependent on one verse of Scripture, Matthew 28, 19. But what he fails to teach is that when you search the Scriptures and all verses on baptism, when you search the Scriptures correctly, you will find that baptism in water was done always in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can search it out in the book of Acts or in the epistles of the apostles, and this is the correct way to baptize. Now, Theologically, you cannot build a doctrine on one verse of Scripture. This is also completely uh, attacked by the Reformers. Uh, when they first started teaching the Word, they said that you could not hold on to one verse and build a doctrine from there. So, Trinitarians are wrong when they teach that baptism is in the name of the Trinity. To say that all these simple readings of Scripture evaporate for the oneness believer, or as Dr. Reeves calls him, modalist, is totally ridiculous. Bible Christians hold up to the Scriptures, we hold them dear to us, and we teach every single verse of Scripture, especially the words of Jesus Christ. It is Trinitarians who violate the Scriptures by introducing uh, philosophy into the Bible and mixing it with Scripture, to let us think that there is a trinity there when there is none. Now, 
God doesn't perform tricks and God doesn't do the work of a puppeteer. No. What Dr. Reeves fails to understand is that God is omnipotent, omnipresent. He can be at all places at all times. God can be in heaven and He could also be on earth through the Son redeeming mankind unto Himself. Easily we can explain all of these passages when we know who God is and what He is capable of doing. God bless.